back there and there. Mission possible. Listen to God's strategic mission for every Christian. Each one of you has one, okay? And you might not know it, but you do. Every Christian has a mission from a mission from God. Uh, some don't know they have one. Some of you might it might be brand new news that God has something for you to do. You think it's the preacher's supposed to do it? No. My job is to equip you for what God wants you to do. And each Christian has one. Uh, some don't know they have one. Some know it and ignore it. God forbid if you're that Christian that is ignoring what God has told you to do. Because I don't want to I don't want to live under your roof. I don't want I don't want to be too close to you if you're not doing what you know to do and you're ignoring what God told us to do. Some know it, refuse to do it. Uh, crank me up on this thing. This thing has failed on me, Marky. There we go. Some know it, refuse to do it, and others try real hard to accomplish it. I thank God for or ladies like Miss Ethelene and others and Brother James and his group, they go pass out tracts all over the place on Santa Fe and University of Florida, and uh, they're trying hard to accomplish that mission. So don't be the one that forgets to do what God has told us to do. Now, our text today comes from the book of John. You can go there if you want to, John chapter 4. And if you remember the story, it, how many of you have seen The Chosen very much? Did you see that when, when Jesus was at the well and the lady came to the well, remember? And she was coming at the kind of a weird part of a day for women to come because she was a, kind of a fallen woman. And uh, Jesus revealed to her that he was Messiah. He was the first one he told, you know, and she just is overjoyed that Messiah told her. And she goes back to the village and brings all the men down there to see Jesus. And about that time, the disciples are coming back from McDonald's and Arby's or wherever they went. And they're, you know, trying to give Jesus food. He said, man, I got food you don't know about. You know, I've already ate there. And he said, my, will, my food is to do the will of my father, which he had done. And he had met this woman at the well. And in John chapter 4, verse 35, Jesus said, Say not that there are yet four months, and then come of the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they're white already at the harvest. As he's saying that, I want you to picture in your mind that this hill with some men in white turban heads walking that way. And as they walked, they, of course, you walk, you kind of have a little bit of a gate in your walk, and, and their heads are bobbing a little bit as they walk, and it looks like a field of grain that's ready to be picked. And Jesus gestures to them, don't say there's four months. Look on the fields, they're white to harvest. And, of course, you know the rest of the story, that whole village Believed on Christ pretty much. And they said, we don't, now we believe not because of what you said, lady or woman, but because we seen him and, met and believed on him ourselves because we heard him and saw him. So as you think about that today and you think about God's mission possible for you, finding your mission, your purpose in life, people go through life today with no purpose or direction. You don't need to be one of those people because we have a clear direction and a clear purpose from God. They're, you're here for a reason. Right here and right now. Jimmy and Gwen had no idea in the 80s why they were doing children's church other than they were just being obedient. And yet God knew because he had a young man sitting there. He knew would be a missionary in India one day. And he was using the gospel that Jimmy and Gwen were preaching in children's church to draw this young man to him. Listen, you have a mission. Each one of you has a mission. And I want to help you find your mission, find your destiny, find your purpose in this life because each one of us has one and and Jesus said don't say that the harvest is some other time it's right now in fact there's never a better time in America to tell people about Christ and win them to Jesus never better a better time people will listen they will respond they will take a track from your hand because we live in a fallen society we, fit, we live in a dangerous world. We live in a world that's full of problems and trials and people's lives are, are messed up. 
and they want some answers. And my brothers and sisters, you have the answer because every answer that is needed to be answered is found right here in the book in the, in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, first of all, lift up your eyes and look. Listen, start looking around. Look what's happening. Read the signs of the times. Don't have your head buried in the sand like an ostrich does to hide from danger. Listen, it's time to look, lift up our eyes and look. The field, the world, see the big picture. Look what God wants us to look at. We're, we're, the, the field is ready, white to harvest. Uh, in Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, Jesus said, there, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We forget verse 20 though. It's one thing to preach it, it's one other thing to teach the rest of it. He says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. You see, the field, the world, seeing the big picture, seeing it like God see it, already white to harvest, ready to be picked, ready to be harvested. And Jesus is telling us, go ye. And when he says, go ye, who is he talking to? Put your finger on your head. You're right there, talking to you. He's talking to ye as you and me, okay? That's us. Go, therefore, teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. Listen, lift up your eyes and look because it's time to go and harvest the field. There are many, many souls that are going to be in heaven because of what you say and do for Christ. I, we, I was reading uh, John 17 this morning in our class, in, uh, in our Sunday school class, and the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father in <coughs> It always blows my mind because Jesus said he prays not only for those that, that God had already given them, but those that will believe through their word. Their word is what we do and say. What you do as a Christian is important. You know, and you go back and read John 17, the whole chapter, and read that part that, that refers to you. Those that will believe through their word. Talking about Christians that are alive right now on the earth or were alive back then. Paul and Barnabas went on those mission trips. They won many, many people to Christ. After that, the mission movement has continued, and we've won many, many people to Christ. But it's still continuing. It never stops. It continues generation after generation, and, and people after people, and nation after nation, and people still come to Christ when we preach the gospel. I don't save anybody, and you don't save anybody. God does all the saving. But he uses people like you and me to carry the gospel. He has to have believers that are, that are listening and looking to what God told us to do. He said to go and teach. The second thing we need to do is lift up your feet and go. Lift up your feet and go. Well, where do we go? We teach all nations. Thank God people are going to Kenya. Did you know where the center of Christianity now is? Pew Research has done this. You can, you can Google it yourself. Go to Pew Research, Christianity in the World. What will blow your mind is, you know where the center of Christianity has shifted now? It used to be America and South America. It's shifted to Central Africa. You say, what? Yeah, Central Africa is responding to the gospel in, in Southeast Asia and all the way over into Africa. People are responding to the gospel and, and it's changing lives and changing cultures and changing people like it has for 2,000 years. See, we need to lift up our feet and go. We need to witness to lost people. People around you are not saved most of the time. Your neighbors, some of them are not saved. Some of your family members are not saved. Listen, if they're lost, they're going to go to hell when they die. Would, would you want anybody to go to hell? Would you want people to go to heaven? That was pretty weak. Would you want anybody to go to hell? Would you want anybody to go to heaven? Okay, then you're going to have to lift up your feet and go. Listen, I, I go and I'm going to keep going till I die. And, and, and our, our leaders of our church are going to keep going till we die. It's not just us. It's all the believers in the family of God. Je, uh, J Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. You see, right now is the time to do the work. There's coming a day in the near future where it will all cease we won't get to preach the gospel. We won't have the opportunity to preach the gospel. It won't even be available in the future. So right now it's available and, and it's, 
And you say, well, what's he talking about? The night cometh. What night was Jesus talking about? Well, one of them is the rapture of the church. I believe in a, in a premillennial rapture of the church. He takes God's people out. And then the Jewish nation comes right back into the forefront and they start preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And you got 144,000 Jewish Billy Grahams preaching across the world and winning people to Christ. And people will be saved during that time. But you won't be here to be a part of that. You won't have an opportunity to do what God told you to do because you won't be here. So I think he was referring probably to the rapture. Uh, he, he might have been referring to the approaching evil time on the earth. Did you realize evil is in control in most of the places on the earth right now? Read the paper. Read what they're trying to cram down the throats of the children in public schools. <laughs> Listen, tell me that's not evil. Folks, that is terrible and evil. And, and just the evil is, is gobbling up. In fact, one, one scripture says, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? You see, evil is, a, is encroaching in a lot of places. So when he said, work while it's still day, because the night's coming when nobody can work, maybe the rapture, he was, I think he probably was referring to that. He was referring to the approaching evil on the earth. He was referring to the end of the world. Because it's going to end one day, isn't it? You know, we hadn't yet, thank the Lord, but it's going to end. Uh, he was talking about the end of his physical life on earth. He only had three years or so to minister once he was introduced as Messiah and came out to the world of who he really was. So he was talking a little about that. His, his life was getting ready to end. He's also probably talking about the end of your physical life on the earth. If you're lucky, you get to live to be 70 and sometimes 80. How many people in here are 80 or older? Just raise your hand for a minute. Look, at, look around. Okay, they're, they're blessed. They're past three score and 10. Okay, that's past 70. Three, how many of you are 70 or older? Raise your hand. Look around. 60 and older. 50 and older. 40 and older. Cool, look, we have a young church. Look at that. Look at all the 40 and 30 and younger. See, the majority of you are 30s, 40s and down, so that's pretty cool. A lot of churches only have white-haired people like me in it. Like we call them the, the, the Q-tips, got the Q-tip type. Thank God we have some young people. Thank God we have a school. A lot of churches don't have schools. We do that on purpose because we want to reach young people. We want to meet the Shan want to meet reach the Shannons, you know, young and, and get them turned on for Christ and they go out and do something. But see, your life is going to end one day soon. Brother Terry is in heaven right now. He sat right where Brian is sitting two weeks ago. He was happy, rejoicing, he loved the Lord, he was shaking everybody's hand. Boom, God took him to heaven. You see. His physical life is no more. We have great memories of, of his faith in Christ. Listen, Jesus said, work while it's still day while you have time. Okay, The night comes when you can't do it anymore. There, there's coming a time where your health won't, won't let you. There's coming a time where your body won't let you. There's coming a time where you're going to check out. Okay, So what you do for Christ needs to be done now. Brother Bob, Miss Paulette, sitting there, my, my, one of my best friends in life was Bob Thomason, soul winning partner, friend, hunting partner. He served God faithfully. And, but he would be echoing what I'm saying right now. But tell him, Billy, because there's coming a time where, you know, you don't get to do it anymore. Now, his is in the record books. He's got a great record that he sent on ahead. And I hope you will have one. Okay. I hope you will be like this little lady that's passing out tracks and trying her best in her way of getting the gospel out. Listen, the time's coming where you won't be able to. So listen, do it now. The night is coming. Acts 1 8 says, But ye shall receive what? Power. Ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. Ye shall receive. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be. Well, what will you be? Witnesses. Witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. I know people, and i got good friends, all they talk about is what the Holy Spirit did for them. I did this and I did that and i got something you don't have and you need this. And My question to them is, well, how many people have you led to Christ? Who, do you, who have you witnessed to this week? 
You know, about half the time, some of them do witness, but there's a whole lot of them. That, that's all they, they talk about, the gifts and what other people don't have and they have it. Yet they don't go so winning. Jesus said, when you have the Holy Spirit, you shall be my what? Witnesses. You don't have to prompt a Christian that's filled with the Holy Spirit to be a witness. They witness automatically. You can't stop it because it's, they're full of the Lord. Man, when the, those songs were going on those, and they were singing, I was just like, man, I couldn't hardly sing. It was so good. It, some people don't like praise and worship. They don't like it on the screen. You know, you hear that some churches that complain. Man, I love it. You know why? Because it's not about Bill Keith. Not about me. I don't care what it is about me. It's not about you. Who is it about? It's about him. And it's praise to what he's done, you know. And man, if we, get un- we, if we really understand that and we start really getting into that and praising him for what he is, you'll get all that other, those other nonsensical thoughts out of your brain and get into what God wants to do in your life and, and you will have the power of God in you. He says, I inhabit the praise of my people. So praise is important. And I thank God for it. So, so where do we start? When he says, you know, you'll, you'll receive power, where do we start? Well, say, so go to Jerusalem. Well, I can't get to Jerusalem, but I can go to Gainesville. Yeah, that's my hometown. Jerusalem was their hometown, wasn't it? Gainesville's our hometown, or, or High Springs, or Archer. Or anybody miss, uh, misfortunate enough to live in Micanopy? <laughs> no, <laughs> Micanopy's a fine place. Wherever your hometown is, that is your Jerusalem. Our Judea is our county, like Alachua. Our uh, Samaria is our state. And then the uttermost part of the earth, everywhere else in the, on the earth. And thank God that there's Shannon's and there's Brother uh, Dr. Prines and, you know, uh, Michael and Melissa and their boy. And people like those that are going other places. They're going to other parts of the earth, you know. That little crazy James Lofton there, I love him to death. He's a so wonder par none. That crazy joker, <laughs> he's loaded up before and flown to other countries, just shown up there because God told him to go. Just packed up and went. Not with a group, just by himself a lot of times. And he'd show up and do what God told him to do. Got to Guyana, one place. Peter Leela down in Guyana that you, some of you are on Facebook with that is a pastor there now and doing great. That's one of James's converts. Yeah. Just because he decided to go to Guyana. Who goes to Guyana? You know, I mean, nobody goes to Guyana, you know, except God sent him there. See, uttermost parts of the earth. Thank God for people that listen to the leadership of God and they do what God told them to do. Because, listen, you're, we're on a mission. We have a mission. But a lot of people just won't accept the mission. A lot of people ignore the mission. A lot of people refuse the mission. But there are some. There are some that step up to the plate and say, Here, my Lord, send me. In a lot of churches, it's, Here, my Lord, send the preacher. Or, Here, my Lord, send my sister. Here, my, send brother so. No, we need to have the same attitude as the prophet had. Here, my, send me. But don't be afraid to say that. Don't be afraid to say that. Here, my, send who? Where does it stop? <laughs> me. <laughs> See, it stops with you, doesn't it? You and me. We have, to, we have to take personal responsibility for what God wants to do. Scripture says, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Out of the huge churches, you know there's 90, 90 million plus people in America that call themselves Christian? 90 million plus. Out of those 90 million plus, how many of you think really are serious about carrying the gospel out and sharing with lost people? Out of 90 million, you think we ought to be able to get a team to go somewhere and do something? We should be able to. And thank God there are churches. Our church is trying to be one of those. Westside and others are trying to be one of those type of churches. And we're trying to send people into the field, the labor field. 
Jesus went on to say, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. See, it's not my harvest. We go out and win people to Christ. It's not just to make South or Countryside Baptist look great. Or it's not to make Westside look or or you know Jonesville or whatever church you happen to be a part of. It's not to do that. That's not why we do it. It's not to make Pastor Bill or Pastor Corey or Pastor Gary, whoever your pastor might be. It's not to make pump them up and make them look great. Listen, we don't do it for that. We do it for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We do it for the Prince of Glory that left heaven, came to the earth, and died on the cross for sinners. Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, and we're to be ambassadors to go out into a lost and dying world and draw people to Christ, try to draw the net for Him. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest that He'll send forth labors unto His harvest. Listen, the call's still going out right now, all across the earth right now. God's looking for people like you. Christians like you that will just, number one, acknowledge him, and number two, accept your mission. The mission possible is for every believer. It's not just for the, the, the super saints. That might, you think they're super saints because they step up. No, just ordinary people like you that are sitting in the pew waiting to see what God will do in your life, and now he's calling you, and he's tapping you on the shoulder and saying, who will I send and who will go for me? And what will you say? Hear my Lord, send. Don't be afraid. You're afraid he's going to send you a mission field, aren't you? Hear my Lord, send. Hear my Lord, send me. Third thing, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray the Lord of the harvest will send forth more workers. You know what I really hope out of our, we have uh, two Christian schools getting ready to start one in Hawthorne. We still are affiliated with Creekside and Otter Creek that we started. We're affiliated with a lot of others, and we're trying to help boys and girls get a great education, a better education they can get in the, in the government system. But, but more than that, we're trying to produce champions for Christ. Amen. Yeah. I want to produce champions for Christ that will step it up, and they will step out and do something for God. I haven't done a, a recent study on it, but I can promise you this. A lot of our graduates are serving the Lord somewhere, if not in full-time service, they're in a church somewhere serving Jesus right now. They don't drop out. They get involved, and thank God for that. And that's our purpose. Dr. Falwell drummed it into us at, at Liberty. I want to be those champions for Christ, and, and we, we believed it. <laughs> We're just a little old guy from Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> How can I be a champion for Christ? And, but I believed him. And I said, I'm going to do the best I can to be the champion for Christ. And I'm not going to turn back. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to do what I can to affect, in a good way, my culture, my town, you know, my county, my, my, my world, and, and our, where we live. Listen, God's calling you. He wants you to be one of his champions. He wants you to be one of his representatives. You say, I'm just a kid. I'm just a little kid. I'm just a teenager. Listen, God's got a call on your life. It's important that you listen to his call. Pray the Lord of the harvest will send forth workers. Pray that God will make you willing to do it. Go and do what he wants you to do. The last thing is lift up your wallet and give. I asked you to give a while ago to help us with the mission trip. Where are my guys, the counters? How much did we raise? Where are they at? Go back and find out, somebody. Let's, I want to hear the result. Thank you. Go find out. Let's see how much. Let's see how much God did a while ago because of your faithfulness. I, I'm just curious, not trying to, you know, make a scene or anything. Only to say, here's what God did, because you you did. You lifted up your wallet and gave. We don't we don't take a lot of special offerings. If we have a special guest, sometimes we will. You know that. But when you when we're supposed to send our, our church should send the people right. They shouldn't have to to sell their four wheeler in their house to go to the mission field. Amen? Should they have to, to, to not have groceries for that week to go to the mission field? Okay, good. That's, I got two of you. Good. Should they have to forego their monthly rent? Then put it. What happened in the New Testament when people were called? Who sent them? Who sent them? The who? Who is the church? 
Put your fingers right here. We're the church. The church said, separate me, Saul and Barnabas, and they sent them on those mission trips. The church funded it. Now, I know this. When you step out and you saw the limb off, say, God, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. God will take care of you. He'll take care of you. How many trips have you been on, Michael? Ten? Have you, have you ever just come up short and had to go out and sell bottles or something to make the money? You never had to sell stuff on the side of the road, right? Didn't have to have garage sales to make it? No. Well, one time. <laughs> God will always fund what he tells you to do. James was in the roofing business when he, when he just, just took off and went. Did God provide for you, James? Every time, did God will provide. He will do it. And, and it comes because Christians like you and I, we listen, we pray, we look, and then we lift up our wallets and we give. Uh, see, prove that you really love God and give. Okay? That's the point. Prove that you really love Him. Where's your wallet? When I sat down, I didn't have any money. I don't have my wallet on me. Bonnie says, what do you want to do? How much? I said, honey, you decide. And she came up with a number. I said, write the check. She took it back there, you know. We're, we're on board together, okay? We think a lot alike, and, and I want you to be like that. Be on board with what God's doing. Lift up. Brother, how much? 1928.62. Is that enough? How much you need? Is that enough? 1928.62. How much do we need? 15,000. 3,000 a person. So 1,900, we're pretty short. That's pretty short. And maybe somebody here, I think there's somebody here probably can write that check. <laughs> if God's talking to you, won't put any pressure on you too bad. Write the check if he's telling you to do it to, to make up the difference. We've got to get them to the mission field. I don't want to get them to Kenya and not get them back. <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Prine does not want to raise their children. <laughs> we love them, but we don't, you don't want to raise them, right? <laughs> You're going to have to get a bus if you do that. You've already got enough of your own. You don't need to raise the rest of them, right? So we've got to get them there and back. So let's help them get there. Okay, lift up your wallet and give. Prove that you love God. Give. Experience the, multi the multiplication of God. Listen, God will multiply what you give. He will give it back to you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, you know, running over is what he says. You can't outgive God. So you say, talk about it with your spouse and say, what do you think we ought to do? Write it and give it. Okay, give it. Let's get, them, let's get them to the mission field and get them back. See, God makes your gift grow. That was seed money this morning. You need a total of 15 grand, right? 3,000 apiece. So you got one, two, three, four. There's four times five. Who's the other? Oh, you're five. Five times five. Okay, so need, need 15 more. Okay. Y'all know what to pray for? 15 total. 15 total. So take the... How much is that? Take that. That's two thousand, basically. Say so. Thirteen. You need about thirteen now. Okay. You need. We need thirteen thousand. Pray for thirteen thousand. Help pray it in. So, lift up your eyes and look. Lift up your feet and go. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your wallet and give. And guess what? Start doing those things. You'll be on a mission with God. As you're supposed to be already. And what he wants you to do is get on board. Get on board and start just doing what he wants you to do. Find that mission. That it's a strategic mission for every Christian. He's waiting on you to, to join up. And I promise you this, you're missing out if you don't. You're missing the best part of this life. I, I wouldn't go back for a million dollars and undo what God has done in my wife and Miss Bonnie and my life. I would not do it. I mean, I was minding my own business, had a great construction job. I was a job superintendent. Had the, you know, had the expense account, had the truck, a, a future. And God called me and we walked away from that and not knowing really where, what was going to happen. I would not go back. Shane, would you go back and, and throw away all those years in the mission field? Not a thing, not a thing. So, and you, listen, you're missing out if you don't get on God's mission for you. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to close. And uh, do what God's telling you to do. I don't know what it is for you. I just knew what it was for me. But are you here today and the Lord's really been talking to you about, about doing something for him? And maybe he just gave you a little more clarity this morning on your call. 
you say, preacher, I've been praying about it, and I want to do something for him, and I just feel like this morning I got a, a bump from the Lord that's Help me make the right decision for doing what he wants me to do. Would you pray for me? I want you to put your hand up, put it back down. God's told me what to do, and I'm going to do it. Anybody? Are you here today, and you're reluctant to say, here am I, send me? You say, I'm a little intimidated. I don't know what that means. I'm a little scared to do it, but I, I want you to pray that I will get the boldness to, to obey God in this area of my life. Put your hand up, put it right back down. I'm not going to embarrass you. You're not going to come down here. I just want to pray for you. Anybody? Okay. Is there somebody here today that didn't know you were on a mission, didn't know you had a call, but you learned today that God has a call on your life to do something for him, and you'll say with, with just with a, a uplifted hand, Pastor, pray for me because I learned today that he's talking about me, and I want to do something for him. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm willing Put your hand up, put it back down. I'm willing, just pray for me. Amen. Amen. We'll pray for you. Amen. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you don't know where you're headed when you die, we, we specialize in keeping people out of hell. <laughs> we don't save you, but God does, and we'll show you how, to, how you can avoid hell by meeting Christ. So if you're here today and you want to avoid hell, don't want to go there and you want to know Jesus, stay behind it just for a few minutes, and uh, we're going to have a few people talk to you about that, show you how to avoid hell, and you can learn how to do that right here, Countryside Baptist. Brother Brian, if you would be in the prayer room just in case we have someone stay, he'll be back there in the library. That's the room on the right as you go out, and you can talk with him about that. So let's pray, and we'll be dismissed. Lord, I thank you so much for your word. Help us, Lord, to get on mission with you. It is mission possible, not mission impossible, but mission possible that you do with people like us on the earth, and you're looking for people, Lord, right now. You're looking for laborers for the harvest. So I pray you'll raise them up. Those that are praying and seeking you, Lord, that raise their hands, I pray you'll show them the next step and what they're supposed to do so they can be on mission with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. All God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you.